I'm conscious we've been speaking a lot about saturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, um, rather than food. So just to kind of tie all of this together from a, a dietary pattern, food perspective, what does this look like if we're you know, putting forward some sort of um, way of eating dietary pattern that is good for the liver? Uh, funnily, a lot of those overfeeding studies used muffins that were specifically enriched with saturated or polyunsaturated fats. So people could buy muffins and drown them in sunflower oil <laughs> and eat them. No, I, I think, you know, uh, the, the nice thing about nutrition a lot of the times is once you kind of get out of all of this more kind of zoomed in focus that we've been discussing and you build it back up, the advice ultimately is the same. Uh, it, it really is just comes back to you know, from a food-based perspective in terms of fat composition, plant and marine based on saturated fats, um, you know, lower levels of, of, of animal and saturated fats, and the predominant food sources, of course, you know, beef and meat and butter and those kind of foods replaced with a plant oil, like an olive oil or a rapeseed oil or, uh, you know, nuts, seeds. Um, marine omega-3s if people consume that algal based if they don't uh so those those kind of recommendations we've got are becoming pretty uniform um you know and obviously from a carbohydrate perspective an emphasis on whole grains legumes um you know certain you know tubers etc in lieu of refined or processed carbohydrates um you know that this the actual food-based advice becomes relatively generic after a while. And obviously it's individuals can kind of tinker with it in terms of their own tastes and preferences and culture and region and all of that kind of jazz. But, but actually the, 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 the universality of the characteristics of a healthy diet mean that there are many food-based means by which someone can achieve those nutritional characteristics. Yeah. I think people are often looking for something new, Alan gets a bit boring just mm. coming coming back to the guidelines. It, it really does. It really <laughs> I, does. I was hoping for something new, uh, elaborate, controversial. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I, I didn't know. get it. Have have you seen it's the when Danish... you realize <laughs> it's when you yeah. realize that so you're just like, what are we what are yeah, it's like, is there any point to continuing? <laughs> We we the really entire could have, field. This could have been a five minute episode. Uh, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, have you seen the Danish no. guidelines, the nutrition guidelines? I don't think I have. I'll put them in the show notes. I think you'd really like them. They they not only have amazing imagery. I think the best imagery, um, but pretty sensible guidelines. And basically, I've got I printed it out because i thought this might come up and it's um you know people will say oh of course simon likes these <laughs> but they are supported by the evidence so yeah uh, deal yeah. with it no, they, they've got seven points I'll, I'll just quickly read these off so eat plant rich varied and not too much we kind of took that from michael pollan i think uh number two eat more vegetables and fruit number three eat less meat choose legumes and fish Number four, eat whole grain foods. Number five, choose vegetable oils and low-fat dairy products. I might get you to comment on the low-fat dairy products. Number six, eat less sweet, salty, and fatty food. And number seven, are you thirsty? Drink water. Drink water.